This episode, we have the privilege of spending a day with two extraordinary individuals who have a passion for fly fishing. We are on the west coast of Newfoundland with Millie and Alan Piercy, a couple whose connection to the water runs deep. Millie and Alan started fly fishing back in 1969, a year after Alan had lost his eyesight. 54 years, the hit this year. And I took a out and, and I never had one clue on salmon fishing, not a clue. I put them in the spot and I say, fish here. <laughs> no, what? <laughs> and you, did you know how to fish? No. <laughs> no, we didn't know anything. Alan didn't know how to fish. Either. Only trout fish. No, I never fished salmon before. So, the first we, river. Indian River was the first, river. first river we used. First river we were That's on. where you put them and said, you fish here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> first river, but yeah. I just looked for a little, little spot that looked like it was a little bit wrong, wrong in yeah. it, right? Like many, they were introduced to the sport through a family member. Well, I had a cousin named Stephen in uh, Springdale, see? This was Springdale with the, yeah. the river name, right? He was a warden on the river. He was a warden on the river, so that's how we got started. Yeah. Did you hook him? Well, I, I, was ten years I was 10 years ago. Oh, <laughs> over there, yeah. I wasn't a very good guy. <laughs> so you, basically what you're saying now is you never got much better. <laughs> <laughs> Their outlook on life and sense of humor on the river is inspiring. Alan's ability to navigate the current shows his remarkable skills. Alan and Millie have spent 54 summers on the water together. The first 10 spent without a tight line. Just simply connecting with nature and being focused on living life to the fullest. Yeah, that's right. And he come up with me this day and he said, Al, you're going to hook a fish today. So he said, I'm staying here until your hook's gone. And I did. I hooked it. That, that was the first fish I hooked. You know, I don't know what tier it was now, but... What did you hook it on? Did you remember that? Yeah, it was called, was called in. There was a man, Murray, from Carboneer. He used to tie Murray the Murray special, special. yeah. They're not, and that's you know what? Still uses and that's I, not the fly you're still using. Yes, sir. Today. Don't change it. Through his heightened sense of touch and sound, he reveals a world of details most of us overlook. I don't know what fly, I, uh, I think this, the one I used to call the Murray Special, right? Eh? Oh yes, yeah, dark, dark, dark one, yeah, yeah, yeah dark one, yeah. Got a number five, and that hook's on that, is it, is it bronze hook? Yeah. Yeah, this was, we used to, we used to, tie, I just tie them on the, they were always tied on those bronze hooks, that's number four, I always use number four. I, I use most of my mouth, see when I don't. Because I can't see the hole, see? I just find it. I try a lot sometimes. Oh, I've got it through, look. Just like that. So I got it through the first time, second time. Through three, four, five. Down trail. Down trail. Up around, down trail. Tight. 
Cut it off. Put it on a half inch. That's it. Yeah, you wouldn't tie it on any quicker than that to see would you? Matter of fact, 99% of the time, that's the only fly I use, that one I got in there. We always call it the Murray Special. The old gentleman from Carboneer uh, came up with the pattern years ago on Indian River. They've shared the passion with their son, Keith, who spends time on the water with them every summer. There's a funny thing about it because uh, Keith said a, a little while ago we were talking and uh, we were talking about disabilities. Yeah. And Keith said, you know, I never ever realized that Dad had a disability. And he said, when we were, when I was young and we went up to Guzmi's Rock in the boat, there was a man on shore and uh, he was slapping his fly on the water and he said, he must have been deaf, or he wouldn't do that. But he said it never ever occurred to me that you were in the boat and couldn't even see your fly. Yeah. 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 It's true. Yeah. 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 But, but he, he grew up. He, he grew, grew up, up no, not knowing me well, anyhow. Well, Alan used to put him up on his shoulders, and if we were walking through woods or anything, he'd say, Stop here, Dad, stop here, Dad. So it was, it was what he was used to. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And, and I don't know what it was, but it was like if we were on a river and Keith would maybe wander on up the river. Yeah, yeah. And if like Alan got like a salmon on, it. he would always yeah. come around the turn. Yeah. Almost like it was instinct. Yeah. 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 I'd be, if yeah. I'd be over the other side over here in Deer Lake Hole, yeah. and I hadn't hooked a fish, Millie would go up the river too. You know, usually she didn't stay right close all the time. And of course, uh, you know, if I hooked a fish, but it was almost instantaneous that sure. yeah he would he would he would if he yeah. was here she, well she would too but but well, most of the time early. no she didn't fish earlier see she, no, to go away no from she, she, to she mostly fished after keith left yeah because yeah. yeah. he said to me he said mom i'm not going to be around to take dad so i'll show you the holes oh. and you can take them yes yeah. so that's how it worked Millie is a warm-hearted and patient wife who is a force to be reckoned with when it comes to angling. Her love for the sport shines through on the water in the way she gently casts and studies the water, searching for the perfect spot. There gotta be a fish out there, even if one would rise. I don't mind if I get them out unless I find them. With 54 summers on the river, Millie has picked up a thing or two about the sport. She's confident on the water and an accomplished Atlantic salmon angler. Oh! Rose. There. Came close. He rose. He come good or what? He was maybe just passing through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Keith did too. Yeah. So yeah. I, I sort of Picked learned from, from him, right? Like, yeah. yeah. I can't use it at all, see? Although there was one time we were over to Fort Hall, and uh, you were able to keep a big fish then. So uh, we went down to the, we were stopped there in the, uh, in Army Pool. And Millie hooked a beautiful fish, nine or 10 pounds, and got it in, kept it, of course, because you keep it in. So she had the bug on. Now she said, you got to try this bug. So I, I, I took her pole with the bug, and I cast, and it used to come off by. And she say, oh, my dear, it is pull. <laughs> and time she get all that out, <laughs> you know, what happened, it was gone. So anyhow, we kept at it. I kept at it until finally I hooked it. Beautiful big fish. What? Oh, 
she's had years that she's hooked, most years she's hooked 40 fish. Really? She, yeah, she's hooked a lot of fish in her lifetime. A lot, a lot, a lot in, in a season. Forget that. Yeah, 40 fish in a season, yeah. A lot of seasons she's did that. I guess most times I might get hook 14, 15, 20. Yeah. My, my chances are a lot. Yeah. I get I get to get I get to have the blind ones, eh? <laughs> I tell people I got to have the blind fish, then I can hook them. <laughs> But now walking across this river was no pleasure either with the two of us. No, I used to watch you walking what? across there. Sometimes I'd be worried about you. Boy, we'd be, be up to this. You'd be right up to the top somewhere. Yeah, yeah, boy, we made a lot, a lot of trips, right? And that well, is, out of it all, Noel, I've, I've never seen you fall in. You know what? Over all my lifetime at the fishing, I fell in twice. That's all. But now I don't move a lot. You know, when I'm fishing, I don't move unless she takes me to another spot. I don't move much, but I've only fell in twice. Yeah, I but fell in. But he's got good foot sense. I, yeah, all mine is in my feet, see? Like, I can feel the rocks, right? I can feel where the rocks are. Nighttime, see? When we come back nighttime, I was a guy. Oh, well, yeah. she couldn't see. <laughs> right, so I, I could tell by the feet sense, you know, the, if we were on the right trail. Right? Look, I mean, I could go across here now, and she could take me across and take me up to Deer Lake Pool, and uh, and and she'd be wandering out. We'd be walking out to the usual spot where I go. When I get to the the flat rock just before where the water comes through, I say, "This is it." I stop, put my feet down, and I knew that I could fish. You know, I was in the right spot. Yeah, I'm not going over there. <laughs> no, uh, you stay where you are. I'm right to me limit there now. Oh, I guess you are. You passed by, I'm going to bother you. <laughs> Every summer, Millie has driven the truck and pulled the trailer so that she and Alan can fish the waters of Newfoundland on their own annual migration. We leave on 24th May, and uh, usually we start off in Jack's Pond, and we'll spend maybe four or five days there trout fishing. Uh, we leave there, and we'll usually go to Gander for maybe a week. We leave Gander, and we go, years ago, we used to go right on over to uh, Cod Rock. Yeah. Now we go as far as southwest. And then we come here for a month, and then we go to River Ponds for a month, and then we start meandering back, and we camp our way back, and we get home on uh, Labor Day. Yeah. And we've been doing that for 54 years. How many rivers have you fished? Well, I would say... That is, like all the rivers in this land, how many have you fished? I'd say we've done a hundred out of the rivers. We really appreciate Alan and Millie spending the day with us. So as a special treat, I'm making homemade pasta with mousse ragu. So I'm just rolling out some fresh pasta here. It's just um, some fresh eggs and some flour, a little bit of salt, and pressing them out in the machine. We're hanging them up to dry. And then once I get it all rolled out, uh, we'll stick it in the pot to boil.
after it. Okay. Give me the life in the open where the golden sunlight glows and the spruce throws darkening shadows and the rippling river flows. Let me open my eyes at dawning in the soft green world of glee where the murmuring waters beckon on the pools of a salmon stream. Give me a rod and some tackle to hold back the thrilling strain where the flash from fish is pulling like a century limited train. Let me fish neath the roaring rapids let my eye just follow the cast As it dips to the tug from under When the king of the pool is fired A rush and a flicker of silver And my reel is singing to me And he shoots for the open water Back was tumbling down to the sea And my lion is humming an anthem And I'm thrilled with Shara's delight At the game of sling in the world A fish that is willing to fight Give me the life in the open Away from the big city's blare let me camp near clear running water Where I breathe God's own clean air Let me see the starlight gleaming And the rims of blundering And then the moonlight shining On the pools of a salmon stream and glimpse the moonlight shining on the pools of the salmon stream. Yeah. That was a song that was written in uh, Rivers of Newfoundland by Palmer, 1927, the book was. Was it really? Yeah, rivers of rivers and book, but I didn't know that, yeah. that song came. Yeah, out and, and, I didn't know where it came from first. I, Ralph, Ralph gave a eulogy to a friend of ours who was coming here for forty-five years, and uh, <clears throat> so he was asked, and they found that song in in, in Mac Piercy. He was a Piercy. He wasn't nothing related to me, and he found that song. So Ralph did that, read that song as a poem. There was never any music to it, right? So it was just a poem. And, and when we found that book, uh, uh, P.C. Mars, a Scotsman actually, was the fellow that wrote the, wrote the song. And it was the first thing was in that, first page in that book was that song. It was a poem. Yeah, it was a poem. And I, I, I've seen that, that was book. your music. That was my music, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Huh? I'm really good. <laughs> <laughs> a few rocks there. Huh? There's a few rocks here. Okay, turn, turn a few in. Few rocks here. Turn in. To echo the starting words in Alan's song, Millie has truly given Alan a life in the open. Her guidance and unwavering support are uplifting as she guides Alan through life, ensuring they conquer the challenges together. Keep her coming. You're doing fine. Tired of coming in, going out now. Always. Huh? Always. Always. Yeah, a few rocks here and they have big ones, so just be careful. Watch now. You don't fall. There's a big one in front of you. That's all right. Now, go out there. I'm going to challenge you now. Terry, go out there and close your eyes and come in like that. <laughs> Can't do it. What? Can't do it. Do you want me to lead? <laughs> want you to lead you? Well, you were so lucky to find her. Wouldn't I? Well, see, how I, how I found her was the time that when I first had, uh, I had trouble with my eyes. And I was already, I was going in to do medicine. The new university was open, 
I went in in 66, I went into college. This was in February of 77, when my eyes gave me trouble. And uh, I was ready. 67? Yeah, 67. I was right ready to go into medicine in September. Then I developed an eye disease called iritis, right? And uh, of course, I ended up, you know, getting treated for it. And then I ended up that summer, August, in hospital. And of course, she was the head nurse on the floor where I was. So I sort of caught on. <laughs> <laughs> so I met her there, and that's, that's, that was it. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe you kept her all this time. Well, we down she down kept down. me, I mean. <laughs> Thank you to Millie and Alan for sharing your personal journey with us. Your resilience, love, and zest for life have left an indelible mark on our hearts and will forever remind us that even in the deepest river, the light of adventure and friendship can illuminate our path. Thanks for tuning in. We are your hosts, Castine Coleman and Terry Byrne.